and gentlemen, to an all-new reaction and review. Tonight, guys, I'm checking out an animated film from 2015. That movie is The Flintstones in WWE Stone Age Smackdown. Now, before I get started, I know a lot of people are probably are probably asking right now, Emmer, you have been very vocal against WWE. You say, you say that you haven't watched the product in over five years because it hasn't been good in ten years. Why the hell are you watching their animated films? And I'm going to tell you why, guys. Because when I see a car wreck this this possibly, you know, terrifyingly bad, I have to stop and rubberneck a little bit. Now, while I had literally zero hope going into the WWE Scooby-Doo crossover, partially because I don't like Scooby-Doo, I do kind of like the Flintstones. The Flintstones was something I watched quite often as a child, and I did genuinely enjoy it. So, this could possibly be good. I have no idea. The only way I'm going to find out, though, is if I shut up and I push play, and I'm going to do that right now. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out the Flintstones and WWE Stone Age Smackdown. You know, guys, I really can't help but notice just how cheap all of the animation in this thing looks. Mind you, guys, the Flintstones back in the day wasn't wasn't really like the high mark of television, you know, animation. But it was a fuckload better than this. This just looks this looks painfully fucking cheap. And as for the writing, uh, all of that wit that used to be on the Flintstones, as far as I can tell, all of, all of that shit's gone. It may show up later in the film, but man, this is not looking good. Seriously? They can't even call it a wrestling event. WWE's absolute refusal to accept that wrestling is a thing has permeated into their animated films. No, no, no. Fred can't possibly book a wrestling event. No! Has to be a sports entertainment show. Oh my god. Just that one line makes me despise this movie just a little bit, man. That was fucking terrible. Okay, I never thought I'd watch a Flintstones anything where Fred peeks into a window and watches Barney piss. That came totally out of left field. I was not expecting it. It's probably the most creative thing this movie has given us. And yet, while they were trying to be funny, they totally weren't. Well, guys, that was the Flintstones and WWE Stone Age Smackdown. Let's shut that off. Wow. Um. <laughs> oh, shit. Where to even start? I've got a lot to talk about, guys. I'm trying to figure out where the hell to begin. Okay, let's start with writing. Uh, one specific element of writing, because um, we are talking about the Flintstones here, Okay. One big thing about the Flintstones, especially when guest stars were a thing, it, or whenever they had to reference something, they always tried to shoehorn in some kind of like a like rock or a stone pun into every single name. Uh, one of the more well-known ones is when Anne is is when Anne Margaret guest starred on the show. They called her Anne Margrock. It was like that kind of shit. So you'd think that they'd go to, so they go to some kind of extravagant lengths to make sure every single WWE personality featured here has got some kind of a rocky, stony, you know, name. And most of them do. Unfortunately, one of the ones who doesn't is, actually the only one who doesn't is The Undertaker. Yes, guys. So we have... Not even kidding. So we have CM Punk Rock, we have John Cena Stone, we have Bree, we have Bree and Boulder and her twin sister. I can't think of the other Bella, Nikki, Nikki, Nikki Boulder, I guess. Um, we have Marble Henry, we have, you know, we have Ray, we have Ray fucking Mysteriopal, we have 
uh, I think it was Daniel Bryan Stone, I think was the one that they used for Daniel Bryan for like the five seconds he shows up in this fucking thing. And The Undertaker. You couldn't come up with a rock-based thing for The Undertaker? Like, you could have come up with something. It wouldn't be that hard. Fuck, let me think. Uh, I don't know, the Onyx Taker, maybe? Something, anything. Fuck, put some effort in. It just... It just screams laziness, and, well, laziness is kind of sort of the order of the fucking day here in terms of everything, but I wanted to start with that because it kind of bugged me a bit, because, guys, it, it just seemed so fucking lazy. It's like the one thing that you expect when going into a Flintstones property is all the stupid rock puns that get worked into everything like they even came up with a stone age version of starbucks during the opening credit sequence i think it was called like stone bucks they did that couldn't come up with a name for the undertaker that's fucking sad anyway um now now that i've got that one really dumb nit nit fucking pick out of the way let's talk about writing itself let's talk about the writing in this thing proper um you know, one thing I loved about the old Flintstones car fucking fucking cartoons was their wit and their humor. That while they were forced to fucking ramrod all these rock and stone puns in there, uh, it they still were able to tell interesting stories and everything was still at least fascinating and funny. Um, I want to say that this thing plays out. I. I would al I, I, I would almost swear that they've done an episode of the Flintstones where Fred either becomes a wrestler or becomes a wrestling booker, and that this basically is just stretched out to just shy of 50 minutes. And so basically about, like, double the fucking length of a regular Flintstones episode. Um... Yeah, so I'm almost certain that they did at least one episode like that. There, there was at least one where Fred becomes a fucking wrestler. And that is sort of how the final act plays, is that Fred opts to, to step in the ring and fight against CM Punk Rock, and uh, that would have been cool if it didn't devolve into, like, an eight-on-two handy fucking cap match where the villains just get their shit beaten in. I mean, it, it would have been probably cooler if it was just sort of like a one-on-one -on -one thing all the way to the end. But anyway, that again, that's just another little nit nit fucking pick thing. But still, this plot has been done. Like, there are tons of elements here that we've seen in previous Flintstones episodes. If you've never watched the Flintstones, then you're probably not going to notice. You're probably not going to care. The problem, though, is I have, and I've seen every last one of these, like, plot points and elements and everything done, done before with this property, and I've seen them done infinitely better. Uh, while I'm on the subject of old Flintstones anything, a lot of, uh, I, I swear to God, a whole lot of the jokes, I'm not even talking about, like, plot points and Fred's stupid fucking schemes and all this other shit. I'm talking the jokes. Most of them were lifted from old episodes. It is a well-known thing that every time that you see one of the little, like, Stone Age, you know, gadgets which has to do with animals, such as the, uh, such as the fucking car horn, which is just this stick that pokes at a bird and makes the bird scream, um... You know, almost every time you would see something like that, the animal would have some kind of, like, a witty fucking one friggin' liner. And you see that about four or five times in here. All of them are lifted from previous episodes, and they're like, and they're like four or five of the most well, well-known ones. There was literally no attempt to coming up with something new there. So, similar, honestly, to how the plot was essentially, well, was, was essentially culled from old, from old Flintstones episodes, even the closest things they have to witty jokes were lifted directly from other Flintstones episodes. The only things in here, guys, which seem kind of fresh were Barney hinting that he would like to see Wilma in her fucking, in her fucking bathing, in her fucking bathing suit, and Fred looking in on Barney as he's pissing. Basically, uh, small, small attempts at slightly more fucking risque or toilet humor kind of shit that wouldn't have nor that wouldn't have flown on the Flintstones back in the friggin' sixties and seventies. 
but that's really it. That honest to God is all that they added in, and those and those few jokes, they stand out. They stand out so fucking much compared to all of the worn out and old jokes which they're lifting from previous episodes and throwing into this thing. Writing sucked. And let's just talk about our characters for just for just a moment. Nobody ever just gets called by like a by a fucking like last name. Like whenever it's a fucking like wrestler, they are called by their full name every fucking time. The only one I think who actually like gets away with it, who actually who who actually gets called by by his last name, there's actually two. Punk Rock gets called just Punk Rock like twice, and John fucking Cena and John fucking Cena Stone is called Mister Cena Stone once, and that's when you first see him because he's some distant relative of Mister fucking Slates, and Slates all about using last names. It's a stupid fucking joke that then Punk Rock used to explain why he always refers to Marble Henry by his full fucking name. But that's true with everybody. And, and, and this guy includes, whenever Fred is talking to the Undertaker, he never just calls him Undertaker, he never just shortens it down to Taker, it's always THE Undertaker. Even, even guys, if the fucking THE in his name doesn't work, if it doesn't fit, they will fucking ramrod it in there and it sounds so awkward. Sounds so fucking awkward. Um, so yeah, writing here was just a fucking disaster. Now, while I will say that the writing was horrible, one thing I cannot fault here is the acting. And, um, I'm going to sort of break this down between the real actors and the wrestlers. Oh, I'm sorry, the superstars. You apparently are not allowed to use the word wrestling when doing a WWE product because Vince fucking McMahon absolutely loathes the term wrestling. So just as another note on, on writing, it is never referred to as wrestling. It's always referred to as sports entertainment. And the wrestlers are always referred to as superstars. Fuck that shit. It's wrestling, and they are wrestlers. And fuck any worthless hack who wants to say otherwise. Anyway, I'm going to break this down between the superstars and the real actors. Our real actors are our cast of well-known established voice actors. They just do an amazing job. The one person who probably had the loftiest height to climb is Kevin Michael Richardson, who had to who had to provide the voice of Barney Rubble, who 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 in the old days of the Flintstones was voiced by the legendary Mel Blank. Kevin Michael Richardson had to try to had to try to step up to the awesome that Mel fucking Blank was shooting out there. For Barney, for Bar for Barney Rubble, was he as good as Mel Blank? Fuck no, no one will ever be as good as Mel fucking Blank was. But Kevin Michael Richardson, goddamn him, he tried and he put in a ton of effort, and his and his portrayal of Barney was awesome, and it was a it was definitely a unique take on Barney. Which is certainly better than what the rest of the cast was doing, because you know, as much guy and I'm 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 sorry, I'm so horrible with names. Jeff, his his name is Jeff fucking Bergman. As awesome as Jeff Bergman is as an as an actor, you can tell when he voices Fred, you know Flintstone, or when he voices Bugs Bunny. He's not doing his version of the character. He's trying to do an impression of what you know. And while that totally works for, for, for some people, it does kind of sort of limit exactly what he can do out there because he can't really just go nutso and just, you know, do his, and just, and just, and just do him. So while he was sort of limited there, it still worked. And, uh, of course, the person who had the least work in terms of the real actors was Rusi Taylor, who was the voice of Pebbles in this. And it took me and it took me a couple of lines to figure out that it was Rusi Taylor as Pebbles, but she did a really good job. What little she had to do is Pebbles. She literally has maybe all of about four fucking lines in the whole film, and because it and because it's and because it's Rusi Taylor, those four lines were done amazingly. Now let's talk about our superstars, shall we? Most of them 
I have learned suck at acting. When you ask them to do something that is not cutting that that is not cutting a promo or fighting or well working a match, they cannot act. Uh, the biggest case of this has got to be Mark Henry as Marble Henry. But then again, considering the fact that uh, the pinnacle of Mark Henry's entire wrestling out. out Output is when he knocked up a woman in her 80s and she gave birth to a hand and his acting during all of those promos was shit. I really wasn't expecting much from him. But God damn it, he couldn't even meet the low standards I had set for him. The man sounds absolutely wooden here. And because his character is essentially just CM Punk stooge, I'm sorry, CM Punk Rock's stooge, he doesn't have a whole lot of lines, he doesn't really do anything, he's just he's just in the background. His whole job is to just do fucking lines, and he can't do them for shit. On the flip side of that, CM Punk, dude, amazing performance here. Uh, CM Punk, out of all the wrestlers, is the only one who really sounds like he fucking cares. I say that knowing full well that The Undertaker... Is just is just doing the Undertaker, and he just has to basically sound all deep and menacing and terrifying, and you're fucking done. And the Undertaker can say anything and make it fucking work. That honestly is why Mark fucking Calloway is so damn good as the Undertaker. So because the Undertaker doesn't have to stretch, he doesn't have to play any other character because he was the only one that they didn't fucking bother bother to give a new Stone Age name fucking to. He's just he's just doing him, and even though it's kind of lazy because it's the same shit he's been doing for over 20 goddamn years, it works. And it works incredibly well. Um, God, who else just f fucking a... Well, I believe there's a reason why Daniel fucking Bryan is only in this film, I, I, just for all seriousness. He's really only in the thing for like 30 seconds. I think the reason why he's only in it for about 30 seconds, motherfucker cannot act. Uh, and, in, and in that 30 seconds, uh, when he has to break out that stupid fucking yes fucking chant of his, it seems so forced and it sucks so bad. I was so happy when that goddamn scene was done. I really, really was. Um, the rest of our, the rest, the rest of our superstars, whether it be John Cena or Ray or fucking Ray fucking Mysterio or the Bella Twins, they just showed up and phoned it in. There's nothing ultimately special there. It was actually kind of sort of dull. Uh, so there we go. I was able to cover acting. God, what else? Animation. Fucking hell, the animation. Okay, I said earlier that the animation felt a little bit cheap. I want to go into detail here, because as I'm watching this thing, um, I was not reminded of the animation style to any previous Flintstones movie or TV show, and that's totally fine. I am totally down for a new look. The problem here is that this new look looks awful. And when I say that, um, I want you guys who know anything about animation, I want you to think about the way that, the way that animation looks from, say, like, Spumco, or Carbuncle, or, like, Rough Draft, all these other studios, which know how to do really solid television animation, and they normally are really good at things such as, like, wild takes, and squashing, and fucking stretching, and all these other things that work for other cartoon properties, but have never really been utilized in the Flintstones. Imagine, imagine the styles of all of those studios. You know, Rough Draft, Carbuncle, and Spumco. Only now, it basically is from a bunch of guys who saw that and thought, hey, I can totally do that, and then fail fucking miserably. We have art here which looks ugly as shit. We have, we have these weird faces and poses, and the bodies are never quite modeled right. Guys, they're honest to God are shots where the fucking Undertaker looks like he's about three feet tall because they couldn't draw him to scale in every single shot. Like, there are times when he looks like he's about three feet tall, and when he's in the ring with Barney fucking Rubble, he looks like he's 15 feet tall because they couldn't animate anything to scale here. The fucking, the fucking ring, because our characters are 
constantly changing in scale. The ring looks like it's basically anywhere from like six, it, it looks anywhere from about six feet by six feet to like 30 by 30. Because, and mind you, that is the same ring, same fucking match, but of course because the character models are changing and they couldn't change the size of, of the background ring, look like shit. Uh, the faces look terrible, animation here looks horribly cheap, mouth movements do not or correction, mouth movements kind of match what's, you know, there. Um, it just didn't look good. It looked awful from just start to finish. Uh, now, I know some people are probably not going to care about that. People who've never watched the Flintstones, they don't know anything about the animation works of, com of once more, companies like fucking, like, Spumco and Rough Draft and Carbuncle, they aren't going to give a shit about, you know, how this thing looks or how it basically looks like it's a shoddy fucking knockoff of the work of those three studios. Most people are not going to care. I did. And that's why I felt the urge to mention it. This... Uh, guys, I I am used to direct-to-video animated films looking like shit. This looked shittier than even most of those. This is absolutely cheap as fuck. Phoned in bullshit. I'm gonna say this right now. As much as I dumped on WrestleMania Mystery, the fucking Scooby-Doo WWE thing, as much as I shit on that, at least the animation was decent. At least the characters' models were always to fucking scale. It always looked decent. We didn't have characters who were changing shape and fucking size from shot to shot because the animators couldn't be fucking bothered to fucking try. So, animation here, just, at, oh my god, this is just horrible, horrible shit. Um, our sound mix here is okay. Our music is fine. Uh, our our fucking like our fucking like background score and everything. It all kind of sounds like something that would probably be in a modern day Flintstones Flintstones film. I'm actually I in just a slight way. I'm actually kind of sort of disappointed that they didn't bother to use any of the stock stock music from the old Flintstone show that might have helped kind of bring a little bit more Flintstone feel to all of this. However, though, I can also see why you wouldn't want to do that, so it, it kind of sort of balances there in terms of music. Um, I would love to say that we get to hear a whole lot of the wrestlers' themes, especially when, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the superstars' themes as they're going down to the ring, but we only hear one, and it's John Cena's theme when he grabs a chair that CM Punk Rock is about to hit him with, all of a sudden, just randomly, Cena's, Cena's theme gets dumped in there, and it plays for about 45 seconds. I guess it was supposed to show that Cena is, like, fucking, I guess, like, hulking up and is gonna just smack CM Punk Rock with the chair. The, guys, that one, that one lone piece of music, it just felt a little bit out of place to me. Um, oh boy. Sound mix here was decent, I can totally say that. Ultimately, guys, when all is said and done, can I recommend the Flintstones and WWE Stone Age Smackdown? No, uh, I really cannot. Uh, I cannot on a whole lot of levels. I don't think that current WWE fans are going to like this, especially considering the fact that this thing came out last, last fucking year and a whole lot of the uh, superstars involved are no longer with WWE, or they're not being used at fucking all. Um... I don't think that current WWE fans are going to like this. I know for a fact that old school WWE fans are not going to like this. Because from an old school fan, this was shit. Uh, Flintstones fans are probably not going to like this because it basically is a whole lot of the plot points you've seen in better in better episodes of the fucking Flintstones. And they were done better then. This whole thing, guys, is a fucking disaster. And... You know, I kind of had some hope there. I kind of thought, you know, maybe they'd do something decent with fucking Flintstones. No. Fuck. Now, guys, I happen to remember a couple years ago, uh, there was talk of a new Flintstones television show coming that was going to be done by Family Guy creator Seth MacFarlane. After seeing this, I wish he hadn't have canceled that fucking show. I think anything that Seth could do would be infinitely better than this and i've seen shitty episodes of family guy that i would never want to watch twice i'm willing to watch those over this this was terrible now 
Flintstones and WWE Stone Age Smackdown came off the Amazon wish list. The person who sent it in was James. I would love to tell you James's YouTube channel, unfortunately. He didn't send me a link in the invoice that came with this movie. In fact, I actually have the invoice right here. Uh, for some reason, Amazon sends it in three sheets. Uh, the one that's actually got the uh, note, it says, Hi, Emmer. Enjoy your crappy, crappy movie. And that has a little smiley face from James Hodge. Well, James, uh, I thank you. Um, I certainly didn't enjoy the crappy movie, but I did totally have fun at least tearing into it afterwards because that's where I get all of my fun from these absolutely horrendous movies I have to watch. And I would not have had that chance, dude, if you hadn't sent it in. And for that, I thank you. You're fucking awesome. Yeah, guys, um, James sent in this, and... Um, Dude, once more, I do thank you. I was genuinely curious about this thing. I had hopes it might not be total shit, and it wound up being total shit. Now, now there actually is a plus side to this, you know, because whenever I cover uh, Warner Brothers direct-to-video films from DC Comics, I always revel in the fact that there's episodes of Justice League or Batman or Young Fucking Justice or Brave and the Bold on those discs. I can do the same here. There's two classic Flintstones episodes on here. I'm going to go watch those. Because I guarantee you, whatever the hell those two episodes are, they're going to be a fuckload better than what I just... Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this installment of Reaction and Review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.